very last day. Uh, so, uh, to start off this Sunday, we have uh, Ok and Sonia yeah. from Mozilla, and they will be talking about uh, web making. So, please. Yeah, thanks. Uh, good morning. Uh, all, um, just sorry for this little interruption. I think uh, it's for the sound. Sunday mornings are not the best time for talking, and uh, I can get it more when something like this happens. So, still, uh, very good morning. I am Soumya Chakravarti. I am basically, my day job is a direction, and I uh, contribute to Mozilla. I am a Mozilla representative here in Sweden. And I am associated with various other activities like web making, uh, and digital literacy, and try to help education reach somewhere which is not at the present moment. So we will discuss more about this later. And here is my friend Oke. So I'll be going to introduce you. Okay, hello. Uh, my name is Oke Nigria. Uh, my day job is at uh, Stockholm Public Library. I work at the Digital Library Department with uh, digital signage and social media and with uh, some other things as well. Um, Outside of work, I'm uh, involved in the Mozilla community, uh, which is uh, a small but uh, a still uh, alive community in, in, uh, in Sweden. I also blog on uh, moslib.org, which is uh, a way for me to explore the intersection between the library world and the Mozilla community. So if you're interested in that, you can check that out. I have, I'm having some technical issues with the blog right now, so I haven't got any updated blog spots about this event, yeah. <laughs> which um, seems to be bad. But. So we will wait for the next thing to come up and then probably more. Uh, but today's session is mainly about web making, uh, connected learning, and uh, libraries. Though the, when initially we decided about the topic, uh, it was kind of guard, guard means it was we thought that this should be coming first or this should be coming next and we ended up choosing something which was not exactly in the same order we wanted it to. So web making actually comes in our talk at the end and libraries comes in the talk at the second position and the first thing is how is digital literacy and what is digital literacy. So just if this gets started we can keep on. Can you maybe turn down the light on the screen? Yeah. Yes. Uh, we can just like. Yeah. Yeah. some parts and then we'll come back to the web making part. So the current day world, uh, if you see the literacy model which we usually had before has completely changed. It's, it's not the same way we learn. It's something which has remodeled over the past few years but still we follow the native classroom approach of studying. So we talk about the how the perspective matters in the current day literacy and how the perspective matters in the current day literacy and what about a place and what are the tools. Sorry. Okay, thanks. Uh, so when, when I talk about perspective, it's mainly uh, about digital literacy and digital literacy and learning is something around you and something which changes the outlook of how we study, how we learn, how we do anything. Consider anything from the web to anything which is now called MOOC or anything which is now called videos or you study, you have online courses, you have different way of studying or education. Previously we had classrooms, we have students, you do the study, you do through, you go through exams and you come out with colors or flying colors which decided how better you are. So we still follow that which is very strange but a lot of things have changed around you and we didn't notice that. And the biggest point of change is that web 
is something which is a giant thing and we didn't imagine that it will be so big and so huge and so much into the everybody's life. So at certain point of time if you think that web is as most essential part as of your daily routine as of anything else and web is shaping up the first, the study, the way we learn, the way we do everything and the biggest thing of the web is the internet. So that's the place and the perspective is of digital learning and literacy. Digital learning and literacies can be more divided into connected learning and literacies. Connected learning means it's peer peer programming or it's peer learning. So when you learn together, when you learn not as an individual guy in a class, rather than you learn ac across things, if you know about the online courses, you have so many people coming together in a single course and learning it without even having a physical uh, like space where they sit together. It's all about the contact contacts in the internet. So that's about the perspective and the place. If you talk about a bit more details, then it's like the open public spaces. The open public spaces are something like libraries and other glam institutions. So libraries previously were just the place where you have to keep the hardbound books and people go, read, borrow, end of story. But now things have changed quite a lot. Libraries are some kind of open spaces which you can use as maker, maker space you can use as a hacker space. So more about that will be told by OK in the later thing. And when I call about tools, tools is most about web making, how you use the web to achieve this thing and how you try to get the web working for you the most. So web making and tools will be the last section which we'll be covering in the end. So I guess I, I, I leave the floor to OK for starting with perspective and the place. Right, uh, Sumya mentioned the concept of connected learning. How many of you have heard that before, or are familiar with the concept? Uh, it's not really new, it's always been there. I mean, we have all learned uh, all along the generations in, in an informal and non-formal way. Uh, and it's, apparently that's a very strong force for learning when you when you talk to people, you interact with people in an informal way. Uh, and uh, the uh, connected learning movement, so to speak, is uh, a, a way, um, it's, uh, it's a way to describe a new approach to learning that is uh, to, to try and uh, harvest, to pinpoint the kind of learning that is happening outside of school, that is happening in your free time, that is happening together with your friends, with your peers, and uh, because uh, traditional learning institutions, more and more people feel that they are, they are broken in some sense, they are not adapted to our age, and they are definitely not... Uh, uh, adapted to, to the web uh, perspective that we all have now uh, in our ways of interacting with the world and with people. So connected learning is a new approach to learning and Mozilla is very active in this field together with some uh, other uh, organizations and, and companies and individuals. They the, the, the people involved in this uh, usually split, uh, uh, or rather they uh, pinpoint, they emphasis six different um, perspectives to learning. Uh, there are three learning principles and three design principles. Uh, the, concerning the learning principles, the learning needs to be interest powered. I mean, this is uh, very obvious for, the mo for most of us, I suppose, but it's, it's so easily forgotten in traditional, like, uh, in traditional educational systems that uh, learning needs to be linked to uh, the individual's own interests and passion. That's why more and more people talk about passion-driven learning. It also needs to be peer supportive. You don't, as Sonia touched before, it, uh, learning is not really efficient if you, if you are all alone or if you are sitting just in a classroom listening passively as a consumer of um, education rather than uh, uh, take, uh, taking active part in, and uh, making, learning by, uh, you learn by making together with others. 
So the peer uh, supported learning is very important too. Uh, finally, regarding learning principles, uh, it needs to be academically oriented. And in this uh, setting, in this community, what they mean, or what we mean, is that uh, the, the informal or non formal activities that we are engaged with in libraries, for example, uh, we need to be aware of uh, the fact that uh, people need uh, learning paths in their informal learning that are heading somewhere, that, are, uh, that have a direction somewhere, uh, that, the, that one way or another can be described in the academic sense. And that perspective is, is very often lost in, in the field that I work in, in the library sector, at least in the public library sector where I work. Um, then we have the design principles, uh, it needs to be openly networked uh, and it needs to have a shared purpose. People need to feel that learning is relevant for them and that we share this feeling of purpose with learning together with others. That it's not just something that I have invented or that I'm not just doing this because somebody else told me so. It's something that it's, it's a, we have a shared mission. Uh, and then we have the, uh, the aspect of uh, production center. And uh, uh, if we feel that we are engaged in a learning process that leads to a specific product of some kind, then engagement and motivation is much higher. Okay, so back to... Sorry for... Yeah. So back to the web. Uh, the web is a confusing thing. It's an, it's an engaging thing, it's an empowering thing, but it's also a confusing thing, especially for us in the library world. Uh, so um, Web Literacy Map is an initiative uh, taken uh, by Mozilla to uh, make it easier for all of us to understand uh, in, where we are in, in, uh, in terms of uh, skills and competences and where, where we can start and where, where we can find learning paths in order to make our knowledge about the web more complete. And they, they divide uh, the web literacy map in three parts, exploring, building and connecting. But exploring is very much, uh, uh, if I see, if I put my library glasses on, it's uh, what librarians have always done. They have helped you to, to do, make searches in the library collection. Now we have the web and, and it's about uh, exploring, navigating, understanding the web mechanics and also uh, confronting the challenges regarding credibility and security. So these are, m many of these aspects are new for, for librarians, but we need to embrace them. And, and, and I think the web which we can be a way to, uh, to um, better understand how we can make difference in this, uh, in this uh, world, digital world. The second uh, uh, building is apparently very much about uh, remixing the web, coding, making, and composing for the web. And finally, connecting is the social aspect, sharing, collaborating, community participation, and so on. And I would say that libraries traditionally have always been involved in all these three aspects, exploring, building, and connecting. But what we need to do now is to make ourselves more aware of how we can uh, protect this mission of explore, helping people to explore the world, to build uh, their uh, world <laughs> and connect with others and, and do that in a digital sense. Another uh, perspective uh, that is important is to recognize skills that are obtained uh, informally. Uh, we as I said, we learn constantly, every day, together with others, and, and, and probably most of the learning that we are involved with 
is outside of traditional educational settings. But we still have we still have very bad tools for recognition of these skills that we uh, uh, obtain. Um, and the Open Budgets project is a collaborative project initiated by Mozilla together with other partners uh, uh, to, in order to build an open infrastructure for, for recognition for, uh, of uh, skills through digital badging. And uh, we don't have time to dig deeper into that at this very moment, but you are happy uh, I'm happy to discuss this afterwards when, if you have questions or, uh, yeah. and after, after the, the lecture as well, of course. But if, if, I, if, if I just add to the existing perspective slide, it's uh, basically he spoke about connected learning, you spoke about web literacy map, and if he spoke about the open digest. If you connect all these three, all three are based on web, all three are mainly, mainly dependent on web. So once you see that of course, you are learning through digital sense, you are learning digitally, you are not learning through hard buying books and covers. It is very, very important that all the aspects of hard buying books are not lost, like recognition. When we go through exams, we get recognitions and other things. So, you, you need to have some kind of a infrastructure like the Open Badges. And it has been used by a lot many other organizations now that you just get the Open Badges, you just get the infrastructure and do some kind of recognition for your digital skill set. So, and also about the web literacy map, I guess the newer version of the web literacy map is coming up and that will be containing something more. But this exact framework is about basics of how a person starts to learn web and how is he a complete pro. So that is the whole chain or that is the whole map. Uh, we were also discussing that if this can be represented as a map, but it's yet not done. But this is the main thing that Web plays a very, very key role in all of the things which Oki has said. So, yeah. So, in order to make uh, all this uh, happen, in order to uh, engage people in the most uh, relevant connected learning activities, where can we find nice and convenient places for that? Well, our answer is, of course, uh, there are loads of places where things can happen, uh, but uh, our focus today is on GLAM institutions and especially library, libraries. GLAM is an acronym for uh, galleries, libraries, archives, and museums. And we, all these institutions are now in the process of rebooting themselves, reforming uh, a new model for, for the upcoming. Uh, for, for, for a new model for the future. Um, how does a museum become relevant in, in a world where everybody can act, get access to so much uh, of the digital cultural heritage by themselves? But it's not, really, it's not structured, it's not packaged uh, the way that you package uh, information and, and Experiences and and cultural heritage in the museums, for example. Um, so, so the challenge for museums and galleries, libraries, archives is to find out uh, position position ourselves in in uh, in the uh, digital uh, culture that is that we are all uh, heading towards, and also uh, to claim. Uh, the public space, to, or, or rather reclaim the public space for learning. Uh, what, uh, what do I mean by that? Well, for the last 10, 15 years, public space in Sweden and other, many other countries of the world have been, uh, has been challenged by privatization, gentrification, you know, uh, all these uh, 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 com um, other tendencies in society that have made libraries, for example, uh, more marginal than before. And that means that library as a, as a symbol and a protector of public space have become uh, uh, sort of threatened. So I think uh, uh, getting engaged with connected learning 
uh, finding partners uh, with, uh, outside of the, your own institution is a way of uh, reclaiming public space for the for 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 the benefit of all, and to 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 uh, make sure that these institutions uh, con will continue to be important uh, places for, for for learning. A very uh, interesting. Uh, uh, work that is being done by Mozilla and others today is uh, the formation of so-called hybrid learning networks. How many of you have, have heard that uh, uh, work before? Uh, it's, uh, we, we all know what a hybrid is. And it's, uh, it's uh, apparently, it's like in, in, in real life, uh, it's about collaboration, about Meeting up with uh, friends and peers and and uh, partners across uh, your own organization and uh, sort of partnering together with others to um, um, empower the, the informal learning and for in this case it's especially for youth the focus is on youth and the, the learning happening outside of school but. But the, the perspective can be, of course, intergenerational, and it should be intergenerational as well. Um, HiveLearningNetworks.org is a web page where you can read more about Hive Networks and also about where they are. We can check out the map for a minute. They, uh, there are high networks in Chicago, New York City, etc. Uh, also in India, Indonesia, Kansas City. Um, there are sort of different uh, levels that you can develop a high community. Uh, it's uh, you, you, you first establish a, a learning community, a high learning community, and then you get community support from Mozilla. Uh, if you if you are successful, then you can become a so-called hive learning network, and then you you get you also get you get more uh, opportunities in terms of funding and so on. <coughs> Sorry, in Sweden we have yeah. uh, made uh, some taken uh, a few steps towards the hive learning community. Uh, by means of some uh, meetups in the Stock in the Stockholm area, um, and we also have uh, uh, this is a mix of uh, uh, activities that we in the Mozilla community and, and this meetup group have, have been involved with for, for the last year. We were at the Stockholm Mini Maker Fair. <coughs> we had an open back in Sweden meetup. Um, uh, there was a um, library network meeting uh, where I introduced this uh, digital uh, literacy map as a tool for librarians. And we had a connected summer breakfast. So that's uh, basically what we've done uh, in the connected learning uh, meetup group that we met up informally on, at different cafes and coffee shops in the Stockholm area just to. <coughs> Try and map the interest and, and the possibility, the opportunity for for the formation of a of a high network. And we are librarians, teachers, uh, developers, designers, uh, all kinds of people scattering. We also have have had some major parties, but I can't talk about that. Yeah, now <laughs> major part is uh, an invitation from Mozilla community to all of us to, to celebrate making wherever we are. <coughs> and I love this idea because maker space and the concept very often becomes uh, um, something that uh, oh do you think I need some water? <laughs> Thank you. You're so right. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so it's a, it's a way of uh, uh, creating your own uh, 
make a space moment, hackerspace moment activity, event. For example, in the library, it can be at the school, it can be anywhere really. And people are doing this all over the world. Small ones, very small ones, it can even be a meetup. A small, what's that called again? And when you do it, a kitchen party. Yes, yeah, kitchen. a kitchen party. You can do it at home with your, with your parents, with your brothers, or woman, sister, and so on. Just to start small and see what happens. And I love that perspective, to start small and see how things evolve. And that's exactly what we have been doing so far with this meetup group. Um, so anyway, Make a Party 2014 was a campaign that Mozilla uh, uh, initiated, and it will continue <coughs> next year as well. And it's not just during the campaign uh, period that you are invited to uh, set up Make a Party, of course. You can do it whenever you like. Make it party dot web make it dot is the the URL. Sorry. <coughs> I wanted also to mention uh, regarding place the existence of a network in Sweden called Skopar Bibla. In, in English, that's Make the Library. <coughs> we are a growing number of enthusiasts in the library community who want to. Uh, develop libraries as nodes, places for making, for open uh, making. And we recently had an event uh, connected to the library, um, the library fair in Gothenburg, just before we had a day of uh, hacking. We hack the library, we call it. Uh, and here are some pictures from, from that event. Uh, <coughs> uh, some people brought uh, 3D printed badges for the event. We, uh, it was, of course, an online conference. And, well, we had a, lot, a great time. Skoparbiblon.org is, is the URL if you want to check out more about what's happening in the library world regarding Makerspace and Hackerspace. <coughs> so, as you all know, there are loads of possibilities on the web, on the open web, to <coughs> make things together with others. And, uh, uh, People are exploring Arduino, Raspberry Pi, Makey Makey, you name it, every kind of, uh, and, and, and some, some libraries and institutions, other cloud institutions are buying 3D printers and so on, but a very easy and convenient way of starting the web making journey is to make use of the Mozilla suite called WebMaker. Yeah. Uh, so, as Ake mentioned about the other things, one of the most important thing is that why uh, Mozilla is involved into all of this thing and the, the mostly it's all the work well. And uh, because Mozilla has the mission of claiming the web as free and making it totally free so that it's out of the reach from the so-called restrictions or boundaries which people get into. And that's why so many of the campaigns mostly relates to web. And we have now another thing called the Open Standard in the Mozilla. And you can go as go to that website as openstandard.mozilla.org. And mostly all these maker parties teach the web, learn web, and make it shareable, make it accessible. It's the main motto behind making the web free. So that's the gist of the last two sections. And Though you can do this web making or this learning or these tools to know, uh, there are a lot of things in the open web, but I will concentrate on only the Mozilla tools as of now because we have less time and there is a loads and flood amount of tools there. So one of the tool set is the Mozilla WebMaker tool set. And that WebMaker tool set has a lot many parts, like one is X-ray bubbles, one is Thimble, and one is AppMaker. 
this are a tool set which helps a person to learn the web, to know how easy it is to modify the web and change it to how you want. And app maker, the first two are for that, and the app maker part is for the new developed Firefox OS. If you all know about it, it's the new operating system for Mozilla, and for the mobile phones, and it's completely written in HTML5 and JavaScript, and it's again free and open source. So for the app maker is for people who don't know how to build or make apps and it gives you a very intuitive screen and intuitive UI so that you can develop small apps just by a click of a button. So I will show all of this to some extent where I can manage the time, I am running it out. But uh, I will just go through the first one. If I go to X-ray goggles, so this is something which shows that how you can remix the web, how you can actually change any web page without having to know that what are the intricacies or how it's built or how it's how it's actually looking inside. So I can just uh, show a small example. Um, we take the FSCon's website maybe. And then what we do is we activate something. I have it already in the marker that you activate a bookmark it. It's nothing but a JavaScript function which actually <coughs> shows all the elements inside. So the moment you do it, what you see is that all the sections are actually editable. Means this is for your own, for your own remix, but these are all editable. So if I want to change the schedule path, and it shows me exactly what to do. And I can actually name, change the name of the schedule to anything. And then what I do is I save the changes and what I see it's immediately replicated. Though it's something which is which we call as remix. So when you remix the web, it's only for your own. It's not that you are changing the website. But you know that what are the elements, what you can do, and how you can play with without even any web knowledge, without given with having no web knowledge at all. And what you do is for making fun for teaching the other people, you can even publish it. You can even publish it on your own, own web maker account so that people can play with it and remix it more. So these are, this is one part of that and now we talk about the second tool which is... Uh, just before that, uh, just a, a library related comment. I, I think that Extra Google is a very nice tool, also a symbol for what libraries, public libraries should get more engaged with and that is helping people to hack their own uh, situation in the, in the local society. What do I mean by that? Well, let's take Husby, for example, the Husby riots. Some of you are familiar with that, what, was ha what happened, the so-called uh, Husby riots happening, happened one or two years ago, I think. And the, uh, the, that's a suburb of Stockholm, and, and there, was, there were um, let's call, let's see, some um, unrest. Yeah social unrest and this got a huge coverage in mass media and uh, suddenly uh, the whole world uh, thought that uh, well it got a sort of very one-sided uh, picture of what, what was happening and the people living in Hootsby uh, and, and I've spoken to a lot of people uh, in the area they felt that this is not what they are writing in the newspapers is it's not correct story it's not it's not our story so anyway, going back to libraries, I think libraries can and should be proactively engaged in uh, helping people to, uh, in this, for example, hack, hack, to sort of remix the web, go to web pages that people in the local society <coughs> feel that this is not, we are not part of this storytelling. Let's tell our own story. And uh, it's a wonderful tool for remixing, for sort of hacking, uh, the latest uh, newspaper uh, um, and, 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 and very empowering way of uh, uh, remixing the storytelling of the local society. So, uh, so if, if I go to the next tool, it's called Thimble. And Thimble is quite, uh, quite simple. It's, it's not like exactly X-ray goggles, but it gives you how to write your own web pages. And that can be as simple as changing a basic web page. So what you can do is you can exi existingly go, in, go to webmaker.org, 
which is the main website, and then you find something called resources or, and, or galleries. So when you go to gallery, you have lot many starter resources or like starter kits which you can play with, which you can actually make a change and, and publish it on your own way. So we have published lot of reports or lot of event reports like having a template. Suppose there is a template like this, this is a maker party event reporter and what you do is you click on remix and what you get is that it's visible. What you see is what you get and it's on the left panel and on the right panel it shows how it looks. So suppose you have to make your own report, you can see it's like it's it's like a template. You have on the left side, you say see the changes immediately, and one of the one of them is suppose I go to So it's like uh, suppose that we I change our heading, the first one. So it's about the FSCon stock. And this this changes and you can change the whole event report like this. This is just a sample and what you do is you can save it and you can share it with your friends. So they can use your same template to do something else do some other event reports and thus you learn by sharing the skills which you just have. So this is the second tool and the third tool is app maker. So I will directly jump into the tool rather than because we are running out of time. Yeah, so what it gives you is it gives you a layout of UI about how your phone looks and it gives you, a, gives you an option that you can make your own small app. So if you see on the left side panel we have something called uh, the bricks. The bricks are nothing but small building blocks and that can be used to make an app. And normally when we consider, so speaking of app, people always think that it's very techy. So when you talk about Android app, you can talk about iOS app, it's very techy. But when Mozilla comes in the platform talking about HTML5 apps, then what you, the big thing of that is you can actually play with HTML5 even without not having much of the knowledge about the web. So what you do, suppose I, I just pull something, I, I will try to, try to make a very small app if it's possible, finally. So what I do is I take a... Maybe we, uh, I, I see the time is... Yeah. Okay. I I will try for a set, maybe a minute, and I, I I will not publish it. I will just show that how how I can how I can just have a small app. And so what? So suppose I have a button. I am not changing much because I don't have time. And so once you do this, you actually shoot fireworks. So I have a fireworks brick, and I have a button brick. So if you see, there is an A signal which goes from the output, which goes in the input on there. And that's all I have to do. So I can change the names, I can save the app and publish it. And publish it on the marketplace of Firefox OS. And that's nothing but a Firefox app within a minute. So this is how empowering is it. If I could get some more time to play with it, I could have shown more. But you are always welcome to reach me or reach OK or reach our booth to just speak with us. And a, a, a final comment, uh, what do these uh, uh, tools uh, provide in terms of opportunity for, for libraries and other language issues as well? It's a shift of perspective. Yeah. We are so embedded in this uh, mindset, we, we have this mindset of consuming the web, being consumers, yeah. buying uh, uh, products uh, that we are implementing in libraries and other language institutions and we're delivering them. We have books that we lend, people borrow books, but instead of being a borrower, yes. we need to change our mindset, become makers, co-makers, co-creators of, uh, of uh, digital heritage. So, so these are some examples of very good tools that can help not just uh, make uh, new cool 
things like an app or, or remix the website also uh, help us to change our own mindset about what you know, libraries and um, institutions are for and who are the ones who should be in charge yeah. and uh, who is the deliverer of information and knowledge and who is the one who will so, consume it, so to speak. So sort of you are the center stage of this whole platform and the one only request is stop being a leecher and give something back to the world. It's long time that we have only consumed. So thanks a lot. Oh yeah, questions. If, <coughs> okay. if you have questions, please. Two Don't minutes for to. questions if there are. Yeah, sorry? Two minutes for questions. Yeah, two minutes for questions. Oh yeah. I'm gonna have a talk next year on App Maker where you actually go into the details. <laughs> okay. It's a good idea. <laughs> sure. Yeah? Does Mozilla have any idea of the average age or other demographics of the people who are using these learning tools? Yes, uh, I can exactly not give you the charts now, but uh, this hives, all this hives info socket talked about, these are actually doing a lot of kids maker parties. So you have very, very small kids which are coming down and learning to code, learning to know the web, and playing with how to make things. So it, when I say about make things, it's not all, all about web, it's also about creating something new. So that can be anything, it can be anything from the craft, anything from the sewing something, anything. So. There, there has been all the charts with the high networks, and if, if you are interested, I can give that also. But there is a huge lot of kids which are actually uh, coming to this sort of maker parties and sort of joining this revolution of the web. Uh, also, if you see the code.org, if you see the other initiatives like the coded dojos, so these are all empowering kids, empowering the very, very small kids who are just coming up. So. I think there are, there are statistics, and uh, these statistics are very, very, very promising. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. So, so you, you do enough to encourage making things, but you also encourage making things free. And uh, Mozilla has done enough to free the web so far, but still, most sites you go to have non free uh, profile on them. Yeah. That is a big problem, uh, especially in the library, public library sector. Because uh, most libraries, I would say in Sweden at least, and I suppose most of the other European countries, are sort of stuck with proprietary software. In most cases, it's Microsoft, actually. And, and uh, we are not encouraging our co workers, uh, co our colleagues, to be partners in the definition of what digital literacy is because we are just assuming that people should consume what there is. Um, so, so this is of course uh, a real challenge to introduce open, web, uh, open making in libraries. Because, uh, that, that means that you are challenging the very structure, the, the, the digital strategy structure, so to speak, of, of the very uh, libraries. For instance, this app uh, uh, maker, uh, when the user publishes to, to the Mozilla Marketplace, uh, is there sort of a checkbox for uh, free software licenses or is it proprietary? Yeah, by yeah, the right. You, you have a free and Marketplace has given you an option of publishing a paid app or publishing a free app. So any web, any sort of app you develop, you can develop and publish it for free and there are licensing terms when you publish it. Paid is not the opposite of free. It's a yeah. Topic. Yes. Right. Right. But uh, but when, when but when you upload something to the marketplace, there is always a licensing terms, and that licensing terms allow you to dis distribute this app free. Yeah. Definitely with the sort of credits you keep, you have. Do you think perhaps you should not have proprietary apps in, in such a marketplace? I mean, yes, this, uh, yeah, I, I know where you're coming. So uh, the thing is, uh, this has been all, all long time a discussion and when you try to shape such of a ma marketplace in the mobile phones and 
it's in hands of everybody, and you don't have Facebook and you don't have something else, then then people will not be using it. So there has been this concoction challenge that what exactly should be uh, done with this so that it's absolutely free. But this is always a part of discussion which I have a no conclusive answer because this part it's it's about the Mo if you know the Mozilla has two parts um, Mozilla Corporation and the Foundation. So the Foundation tries to do all the things, but when the, when you have the corporation which has to make the profits for a certain point, you have to have some kind of a balance, and that balance is something which can be always debated about. Yeah, I think we have to break here. Um, yeah. Okay. okay. So, but but any any questions you can just drop by our booth. We are just outside. Yeah. I have some contact uh, details. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah.